Hi guys, so today I want to do a question. Do you know this guy? You can raise your hands, no problem. Okay, like everybody knows him, yes? Nice. And this girl here. Someone? No one? Nice. So, more people, and you know more about a dictator and a genocide. A uh, guy, then an uh, opera singer, a duelist, and a bisexual girl. Yeah. So, don't you think this is awkward? Or at least, aren't you guilty? Sorry, Ed, you're not guilty, yes, because mm -hmm. it's not your fault. It's actually fault of what you're going to learn here, that is, how to erase someone from history. So, I made this lesson, or this quick course, so you understand methodologies to how this happened and how you can do this at your lives. Yes. So I will show you some of these methods and some of examples, so it's better to understand. And I hope you, in the end, see that you know more about how strange is his history, that it ends up that we know more about genocide people than about uh, people that fight against society, or people that were against their time, or people that weren't fitting in the right place. So, the first method is change of focus, or change of importance. So, you know like, magicians, they are moving their hand, yeah, I think you already know that, but they are moving one hand and playing with this hand, and actually they are doing the magic trick with the other one. So it's just a matter of attention, it's what we are seeing, but you are not seeing what is happening, you are just seeing what is shown to you. It's like, you are all seeing me right now. Because it's like your attention is in me. The problem is, if someone was murdered in the other room right now, we wouldn't be seen. Because we would all have the focus on me. This method is applied to Judy. So, Judy had a problem that she liked a girl very much. And the parents of this girl sent her to a convent to become a nun. Julie didn't like that. So she go into the uh, convent and she burned the convent. Don't worry, the nuns weren't killed or burned. I don't know if they have some casualties, but um, they actually, uh, she ran away with this woman. And the problem is the king of France didn't like this very much because the King of France already had given pardon to Julie one time. So it's really rare to someone to give to the king to give pardon to someone. At the second time, it was like you're a miracle, really. You would need to be a saint or a very important person. So how would she do it? She used change of focus. She began to sing at the uh, opera from Paris. And she sang so well that people go, went to the king and asked for her forgiveness. In this way, she became a very famous opera singer, and her past as a duelist and as an adventurous woman was forgotten. So this is a method that she used in her own profit. However, you can also do this to harm our enemies or people that we don't like. So, extreme focus is like the second step of change of focus. So, the example would be Louise Etienne. She was a very uh, famous uh, empress in China because she's considered to be the only female emperor in her empress in China. And the problem is that she is known because she killed a bunch of people. Actually, she is known because she poisoned 
her own son to be at the throne. The problem is, probably this isn't true. She is known about this because historians at the time uh, and later would be against her because her policies were good to the people, but she wasn't so good to the nobility. She was feared by them, but she wasn't respected, or she, the, the elite didn't like her. In this way, they used extreme focus. They began to focus in her violent actions and aggressive policies to remain in power, and not in her policies uh, in favor of the people, and how she was pro-Buddhist uh, and from for women's rights. So, actually, this is how historians that were, uh, didn't like Wu, they focus in this aggressive part of her. This can be applied uh, to many other examples. And as you can see, the extreme focus is just in taking one personal thing from the pers uh, person or something that is not good from her, change the focus to this and increase that. So, when you already change the focus and increase the things that the person did, because who didn't kill her son, but people say that, you go to the third level, that is when you begin to focus on lies. So you begin to build lies upon this the, uh, in this already topic that it was increased and so on because it's easier. It's like you're reading the image from one, someone and you're creating this and focus in this little characteristic and when people already know this they're going to be much uh, easier to create lies that are connected to the truth or to this image that was built. So, for example, we have Catherine the Great. So, she was a Russian empress, if you don't know, the last one uh, Russian empress to govern Russia. And now let's change a little bit the topic. What do you think about uh, sexual relationships with horses? You find weird, yes? <laughs> It's like not good. So then Miss of Catherine built his uh, they used this methodology of focus on lies and used to build this true or this myth that she had sexual relations to horses. How she they did that it is because they focus in her personal life that she had many lovers transformed her by extreme focus in a nymphomaniac and linked her to liking to ride horses and to uh, have horses in her stables to, the, to her this uh, nymphomaniac side of her and created this myth that she had this sexual intercourse with animals. This was so powerful that even nowadays we have people that believe in that. When Alan Mirren was going to uh, play uh, Catherine in a TV show by HBO, her friends asked, you're going to do the scene with the horse? So, as you see, the, it's a powerful tool that can be widely used. Let's go to forgetfulness. I don't know like so much about this method. It's because it's hard. It's really hard. And you need to be really powerful or infinite. So why this? Because forgetfulness is when you don't talk about the topic. It's when you don't you're going to don't speak about this. It's a taboo topic. It's something that we normally society made forgetfulness, because it's a topic that society don't want to talk about. It's a topic that you don't like to talk about. 
because they're trying to hide and make people forget. It's like when you don't speak our secrets, it's because we want them to be forgotten. Leonardo da Vinci is, if you don't know, was a homosexual, which, which wasn't a um, very um, big deal in Italy in, in his period of time, like, like you. However, the historians later and society wouldn't like so much about his homosexual uh, characteris um, characteristic or personality of Leonardo. So they didn't speak about that in, their, in his biography, in, his, in how this affects his work. Some, nowadays, this is going to be battled by experts, but the, most people don't know Leonardo yet about this. And they don't know that some of his paintings and artworks were actually um, based in his lovers or affected by who, uh, the people he loved. Historians nowadays actually believe that one of his famous artwork and statue was based in his most famous lovers that he, the nickname Leonardo gave, it was like the de little devil. Because people say he, he was really mean to people. Now, the last one, stereotype. People love to stereotype. We stereotype all the time. If I come with here with um, good with uh, big glasses, um, a very formal shirt, and talking about Star Wars, you're going to say that I'm a nerd, right? I know you know that. You also are going to think that if some some women appear here with high heels, a uh, skinny dress and a perfect blonde hair, she would be Barbie. And probably them at your stereotype. The problem is that stereotype is something that we all do because it's easier to generalize and it's easier to people or to the public understand. We don't like complex ideas. We don't like to have uh, to deal with complex feelings and complex persons. It's too hard, I know. People are hard. That's why we stereotype. And if you stereotype someone, some historical figure, some enemy, it's easier to people understand this image that is trying to pass, and it's actually uh, easier to people forget other things about the person. So the person that you stereotype, the only traces that you want to be um, focused or to have attention are going to be its stereotype. Uh, the stereotype. If it, Characteristics that doesn't fill the stereotype will be forgotten. It's like the case of a real powerful and a lot of real powerful women, such as Margaret Thatcher, also called the Iron Lady. So, by her nickname, you would think that Thatcher was like a strong woman, coatless, heartless, and even a word that maybe we don't like but a boss, a bitch. <laughs> because this is a stereotype related to powerful women. It's, they are cruel, they are mean, they are bossy, and they don't have feelings, and their children are going to be raised by iron fists, and their husbands have leashes. Actually, it's not true. That is what was built. Because this made people forget God about other phrases like when the person is kind, when the person is good. A famous speech from Margaret Thatcher is when you need to, uh, something to be spoken as for men, when you need something to be done as for anyone. But it's taken out of context. She said that in a women's meeting, in, she said actually, in politics, when you need something done, you ask a woman. When you need something spoken, you ask a woman. So she was talking more about politics in her 
enemies than about uh, everybody. But they use that to hurt them. Isn't that interesting? You create a stereotype and everything you said is affected. So, the problem is, everybody has enemies. I know, we have. We can be nice to everyone. But, how can we be remembered? We are always to be forgotten? Well, I'm going to say to you that we have ways to survive this, this problem of being forgotten. We can create ideas. You know this guy? He's Nicola Machiavelli. He was famous, he's very famous for his politics, uh, scientific uh, ideas. But Machiavelli survived history because of that, because he created his political ideas. Because actually in his time, Machiavelli was going to be forgotten. He was in politics, he was in a very bad position. Actually, people didn't like him very much. He was I am almost in ostrac ostracized, in exile because of he didn't work. Uh, he wasn't more, uh, very important. So we created a book, The Prince. And you know him until today. So you see, we created an idea like how to erase someone from history, and you survive from being erased from history. Because ideas are powerful tools that are really hard to be forgotten. It's easier to be characteristic to be manipulated and so on, but ideas are going to survive longer and they are easier to be spread than a lot of data. Like, maybe you're going to fight battles or fight ideologies, but you're not going to fight for her information or characteristics only characteristics. So, don't um, forget something. You all have to be remembered. Otherwise, you are going to be dead. Or to not be you to, the, to your legacy. So, use wisely. Use the, these methods to erase your enemies, to protect yourself, and survive. Thank you.